If I were to put in front of you right now um, the imminence of the food and fertilizer crisis, the imminence of global inflation, and, and sort of push and pull that against climate and what's happening every single year and the costs are only getting greater. Um, is it an inexorable reality that we've just lost an enormous amount of time and momentum because the former is distracting from the latter or are they actually moving together? Well, two things. First, overall, we have to get better at dealing with simultaneous crises. We obviously face several right now that are global in nature, systemic in their impacts, started with the pandemic, Every year it includes climate and the food and hunger crisis is obviously galloping along with us, um, commanding less attention, I think, uh, still than it should. Um, so we have to get better at dealing with simultaneous crises one way or the other and understanding what the interaction effects are between them. So there are some crises that drive others. There are some trade-offs, but we we just have to get better at that. But there's both a bandwidth question and also a resource uh, challenge. But you don't fix the food and hunger crisis that we have this year or in future years unless you fix the climate emergency. So you have to do both. They're absolutely intertwined. I was recently with uh, Chef uh, Jose Andres, um, who was about as dire as I have seen a human being be in front of me in expectations for massive expansion of starvation um, unless enormous amounts of funds are directed immediately uh, towards food aid, critical food aid. Um, I know this is, it's what he focuses on and he's deeply committed to it, but um, was he overstating the case? No, not remotely. I mean, I, I have to say, I spent the last week uh, in Davos, as I think you and others did. I was struck that compared to just several months ago when this was top of the agenda, it didn't feature. It did not. Remotely. It did not. And actually, it's only getting worse. And, you know, there's a seasonality to food and hunger crises because they depend on food yields and they depend on uh, on on, you know, when crops are produced and when 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 fields are fallow. So we are going to see this get so much worse uh, over the course of this year. And I don't think we're paying collectively the right kind of uh, emergency attention to it that we need to. We will uh, in the moment, but we need to be doing it now. So I I, I fear he's right. What might that look like? We have done heroic things before on the humanitarian front. It's not like we're not collectively capable of it. So it need, I mean, this needs a, a true mobilization of efforts. Some of it's about financing. Some of it's about making sure that we're working directly with communities who are the most vulnerable and likely to be affected. The needs are huge and growing, and we have to be able to rise to this challenge and see it as something that's in both our interests and, you know, uh, in our you know, in our sense of common humanity, we can't, we're not confronted at the moment with the images, we're not confronted with the reality that so many people around the world are facing, but that is coming, and we will wish we had done more earlier.